Hi everybody, it's Andy Barrar, Handy Andy from HandyAndyMedia.com and today I'll be doing a review for Best Buy's blog on a new smart laser TV. What is a smart laser TV? Well, folks, you've come to the right place. What we're going to be checking out, it's from Hisense. We're looking at the Hisense L9G Trichoma 100-inch smart laser TV. Now, in this review, we're going to talk about the design of this ultra short throw projector, which they label as a smart laser TV. We'll take a look at the setup process. We'll discuss some of the notable features on it, namely the port options that come available with this ultra short throw projector. And then finally, I'm gonna give you my experiences using it and tell you what I think and more importantly, who it's for. So without further ado, you know how we do here at Handy Andy Media, folks, Sit back, relax, get your popcorn ready, and cue the intro. Let's go ahead and talk about the design of this ultra short throw projector from Hisense. Now, when you look at it, it almost has this spaceship-like design. It's actually quite big, and I was very, very uh, surprised at how heavy it was. I think it weighed about 24 pounds, but in the hand, I was like, wow, this projector means business. You can tell from the top, it does have a speaker grill uh, fabric on the front. That's because it has two integrated 20 watt speakers uh, inside. On the side, you're going to find these plastic grills that have this like triangular cutout. And that's essentially to act as vents to dissipate heat. Because if you didn't know, projectors get extremely hot. So getting that heat out is critical. On the top, you're going to find the actual projector lens. Now, what was surprising is that there is no cover, so it's going to be exposed to particles and dust and, and what have you if you have it out uh, over the long term. I have seen ultra short throw projectors that would come with the integrated um, lens cap that would kind of cover when you're not in use. This one does not have that. Now. When you go to the back of the projector, that's really where you see um, something that really surprised me. You actually have the ability to connect your coaxial cable, so like your old school cable connections. Now, for a lot of people, everything has gone digital. However, if you're like me and you have one of these um, antennas on, on top of your house to get the HD signals, they're called over-the-air antennas, you can actually connect this over-the-air HD antenna to this HD 4K projector to get an HD signal literally from the sky into this projector. And I thought that was remarkable because out of all the short throw projectors that I've reviewed thus far, none of them had that ability. It's typically just HDMI ports. This does have three HDMI ports and a USB-A slot. So everything that you would expect uh, in a projector, you have a lot of connection ports, and I think that is what really separates this from all the other ultra short throw projectors that I've reviewed. Now, being that it is a short throw projector, that means it has to be very close to the wall that you're going to be mounting it. Of course, in the perfect conditions, you would have the 100 inch screen. Now, let's talk about the whole setup process because once you get it towards the wall, and in my case, it was about 10 to 11 inches away from the wall. This projector is really designed to be 100 inches. In fact, it's really designed with the, it has no fixed focal lens. So it's like, it's literally designed to be 100 inches. And so you would mount the screen and then just keep tweaking it until you can get the entire screen onto your ALR screen. So the setup process is actually part of this whole ability to get it set up. What you do is after you set it up on Android TV, it does have Android TV built in, they have this one section where it wants you to take a picture with your phone of the screen. Then you submit that to this website, which is super crazy. It analyzes it and will automatically make the adjustments for the projector to fit on that screen. This took me several times to get right. I didn't know if I was taking the picture right and the uploading took me a couple of seconds or no, a couple of attempts, I would say, to get this up and running. And you have to go through this setup process during the installation to get the Android TV up and running. Once I did get the Android TV, you know, the install is super easy. If you have an Android phone or not, you basically just go up and set it up as a Google device 
follow the instructions, it will connect your Google account to the projector. And then within, I'd say less than five minutes, you're going to have the ability to see all that different content that you have from your Google account on the projector screen. Now let's talk about my experiences using it. Now, as I mentioned, I use this in my high tech Airbnb suite, which has a dedicated projector mounted on the wall that hits onto a projector wall. Now, this room has a lot of natural daylight. I tested it in the daytime for this very reason because, well, they're calling this a smart laser TV. TVs are used in the daytime. So I wanted to see how it fared in the daytime, granted, without the included ALR screen. And I have to say, 3000 lumens, it was very, very bright. Like the other projector, I have a long throw projector that has 3000 lumens but it's like 12 feet away. This one's only 11 inches, so you can get a very, very bright screen. Unfortunately, the footage that I had recorded, it just doesn't come as bright as I could see it, and I think that's just because of the, the camera that I'm using. However, trust me when I say that it is very bright uh, during the daytime, and that is without the ALR screen. You just have to wonder what it's gonna be like with the ALR screen. Now. The Android TV is probably one of my favorite ways to use a projector in terms of finding content, casting content. However, the one app that was missing out of all the apps that a lot of people use is Netflix. It seems that Android and Netflix, they got some kind of beef, so you don't have that dedicated Netflix app. It's a little tricky. You're going to have to use like a Chrome browser. Then you would cast off that. So I recommend getting a Roku TV stick or you can get an Amazon Fire TV stick or something, um, some type of other additional stick to use Netflix if you do want to use Netflix. And that's just something, um, you know, I hope in the future, because like they got Amazon Prime Video, but they don't have Netflix. And I think that's just one of the uh, unfortunate things about Android TV. Now let's talk a little bit about the sound quality. As I mentioned, it has these two 20 watt speakers built in and you know just by looking at it i think a lot of people would assume that you know in the position of where it is it might actually be some big bulky soundbar i have to say for the 400 square foot room that i was testing it in the soundbar did a great job in terms of the loudness and the quality it has dolby atmos built in so that was a good experience however the one thing that i found that was missing was a low end bass because in this room I do have a soundbar with a separate subwoofer so there's always a lot of low end and if you're watching a lot of cinematic movies that really is an immersive thing having that low end with your um, viewing experience this lacked that low 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 end but it was still good now I'm gonna take a little risk and I'm gonna cut to a clip so you could hear a little bit of it and hopefully the YouTube algorithm will not flag this uh, audio, but let's go ahead and give you an opportunity to listen to it for yourself. So I guess the, the big question is, who is this projector for? Well. It's definitely for an early tech adopter. This is the latest technology uh, for projectors. And these ultra short throw projectors are really, really blurring the lines between a TV and a projector because projectors historically didn't do good in the daytime. But with these new ultra short throw projectors, they're really starting to up the game. And for a lot of people, you know, this might be a good alternative to a traditional television, especially if you're really into cinema, watching movies, and enjoying content, something like this with that dedicated ALR screen. And I'm sorry, I really wish I could have installed this ALR screen, but um, it's just a lot of work and I'm gonna make damage to my walls and then I would have to mud it and paint it. I just didn't wanna go through all of that. But in the future, I do hope that I could test one of these ALR screens. I hope there's a non-permanent solution. But for, for the average person out there who really wants the, 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 the best of the best in terms of technology for projectors, this is something that you definitely want to check out. It was uh, amazing. It's, it's very, very expensive. So this is really for that upper echelon people that are really, really into cinema. If that's you and you are tired and you want a big 
screen because after about 65 inches, that's really weird. And to try to get 100 inches, I think for a lot of people, a 4K 100 inch image at home, even if you have like a small apartment, something like this could still work. And I think that's what, what is appealing about ultra short throw projectors. So if you are in the market, you maybe have a small, let's say you live in an apartment or a condo, don't mount a TV on the wall, mount an ALR screen and then install something like this. The great thing about this one is that it does come with its own screen. So you get kind of a two in one. Anyways, folks, I hope you enjoyed this review of the Hisense L9G Laser TV. If you did, please subscribe to this channel, like this video, and leave your comments below. If you want more information about your boy, hit me up on my website, handyandymedia.com. I also have a YouTube channel. I do a lot of DIY, how-to content, of course, tech content, unboxing videos, you name it. You want to subscribe to that as well. Once again, Andy Barrar, Handy Andy. Signing out. See you again next time. Bye. For now.